Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm sure everyone is uh, very excited because we currently have two races going on. We have one finishing up over on the Free Enterprise channel, but you know what? We can't wait for them. We understand they have a great race, but we have a really cool race coming here, too. So with that, I am going to throw it over to our team. Uh, my name's Natara. I'm going to be your restreamer for today. Uh, we are going to have Demarine and Rex Rawl as your commentary team, and It's Paranoia is our tracker. Take it away, team. Well, good Sunday, Sunday afternoon, everybody. We are 12 races deep into the highway to the Zima Zone as the other race on the other channel, as Natara mentioned, wraps up. And we are here for race number 13. Of course, I am Demarine 2. And Rex, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm looking forward to lucky number 13. I'm hoping that we're going to have a really exciting race for everybody today. And we've got four exciting runners to watch here. Yeah, this is the this is the battle of the runners who are averaging two points of a seed or two points a race at this point. Big Dunka is two races into his campaign and he is at four points total with a third or with the second. We have in with one race each night due and Pizza Thirty Four, who have both a third place finish under their belt, and Chokasura is beginning his campaign today. Is this is his first race and here we go? Yeah, and we've got. Uh... No key item at the beginning as a crystal ring is going to be a very good defensive item, uh, but we do have uh, a twin and cane as our starting thing. Uh, I think one of our commentary uh, people here uh, has a preference for this twin as well, right? I mean, she is the better of the two, without a doubt. I mean, white mages rule forever, but uh, yeah, this is a really solid start. White mage and cane means that they've got a hitter and a healer, and so they'll be able to kind of push through things even if they don't get the gear necessarily to start. So, should be pretty happy with this, all things considered. So, of course, yeah. Rex, what are our runners? What are our runners trying to achieve today at this point? Well, uh, just like in the vanilla Final Fantasy IV, the uh, objective is to defeat Zeramis. Uh, the way that we do it is a little bit um, roundabout uh, with this uh, randomizer. Uh, since we have the V1 flags on for this, uh, for this league, what that means is we're going to need to find really four things in order to achieve the goal. Uh, one, we need to have a way to get to Zeramis, and that can be achieved either through the pass or the darkness crystal. Uh, we need to get the crystal that transforms Zeramis into the final form, and that can be uh, forged, uh, that's the V1 thing, uh, forged by taking the adamant and the and the uh, legend sword, which normally you can forge into the Excalibur in the regular game, but here it'll give you the crystal. And in order to get to Kokel's hut where you forge it, we need to have a way underground, and so that's either going to be the hook or the magma key. And so those four things are what are going to be required in order to complete this scene. Yep, first things first, of course, our runners are doing a lot of looting and selling right now because they're trying to find the items to help sort of traverse the early game. So we've seen hourglasses and cabins in Baron. So that was kind of our first couple of items. Yeah, those are uh, going to be pretty useful throughout the entire scene. Having access to cabins early is just a, a real nice peace of mind thing. They're not necessarily required to do well in the run, uh, but they do make it so that uh, you feel more comfortable going into more dangerous places. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, our glasses can be really nice to lock down certain enemies or bosses. So if they need to grind or if there's bosses that are actually just regular enemies, they can they can put the kibosh on that before it even starts and keep themselves in good working order. Um, but our runners are still kind of they're kind of divergent looking for things. We've got uh, Dunka is kind of doing the shop loop. He's in Taroya. Night Dew is still looting. So is Pizza. They're both looting uh, Damsian and Chokasur is our first runner down in the Antlion Cave tonight. Yeah, I kind of like this play from Chokasura. As you mentioned at the beginning of the run, this is a pretty strong team to start with, with Kane and Forum. Uh, so going right away into a place uh, with a possible key item check, uh, it seems to make sense to foregoing maybe some of the earlier looting uh, because the team is a bit stronger than you might, uh, might be used to in these seats. Dunka even going down into the basement of Toria Castle. Uh, there's a lot of good treasure down there. It looks like there's a lot of arrows that are found. And if you can find a good bow for Porum, uh, that could be a very good use for those arrows that you find down there, too. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if Chokosur is able to do this on some pretty limited resources, not a ton of items. And it is Bahamut. So uh, Bahamut doesn't do much. Bahamut's going to sit there and count. Um, 
you can count on that. And then at the end of that countdown, well, he's going to blow your party up. Yeah, it looks like uh, Choco found a Stardust item, and that's going to make this being able to defeat this uh, boss in this location relatively easily. Uh, you don't have a lot of hit points, like about a thousand hit points uh, for this spot. And with that Stardust doing almost 700 by itself, easily defeated before it uh, counts down to the Mega Dude. Absolutely, and just, you know, the biggest thing about the early game is that you take the time to find all these resources and you need to cash them out at the right times, and he's going to be rewarded. This is the pan to open up the seed for Koko. Yeah, the pan is going to make uh, checking another basically three key items, uh, key item locations once Underworld Access is granted uh, very easy. So you get a key item when you knock Yang um on the head with the pan from the sylphs and then you get two key items from uh sheila in kabul afterwards so that's three key items you're you do technically have access to one of those without the pan but by having the pan there you get all three in one and that's just a big time saver it's super efficient and night two of course cashes out the uh cashes out his stardust in a bit of a different way as he blows it up on the top of mount hobbs and adds to his party forum number two yeah, portal number two, especially in this really early part of the game, is really good because even though um, two porums aren't Palamon porum, they are still two twins and they can use that twin magic and that can help, um, you know, on that Bahamut fight, for example, if Knight do use that uh, Stardust, we'll have access to twin magic to do quite a bit of damage against Bahamut as well. Yeah, the only negative of that is that Twin Magic bit does its damage based on the Black Magic stat of the Twin in the higher priority spot, so center spot usually. The only problem with that, of course, is that uh, Form's a White Mage. Her Black Magic casting stat is pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it's the, her being able to cast the Twin Magic is only going to be super relevant, really, for these overworld fights that don't have a ton of hit points. Uh, once we get to the underground, it's but by the basis of that Black Magic stat it's not going to be very useful at that point, but she has other uses like the Berserk spell and everything that will come around uh, with that as well. Yeah, that'll be pretty good, honestly. So so Pizza also picking up the Pan Knight Dew is on his way down. Dunka is looking at this fight up here on top of the mountain and doesn't decide to spend any resources yet, is going to actually use the Twin Magic to try and take this down in one shot. Yeah, might, might be trying to save that um, that uh, item for a um, rainy day, but it might end up biting him if these uh, uh, cows turn into Calbrena here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that atrocious damage roll from that. Like I said, again, black magic casting stat, it's real bad. Yeah, I think like if Dunga would have lucked out and gotten the comet instead of the flare, it might have been um, a lot better. But he ends up getting the fight done in the in the end anyway. So uh, no harm, no foul, I guess. It takes Kane three tries to do the job, but eventually, with that axe in center spot, does eventually get the accuracy and is able to do the job. Yeah, those axes with the, the lower accuracy can be tough. I mean, that center spot does help mitigate that, but still, like you, uh, you got to go with what you've got, though. I mean. If, you're, if you don't have access to a top-level spear or sword, the axis, you've got to just roll with them sometimes. Yeah, runners finding some interesting items flying around here. There's, you've seen a gold apple, which increases the max hit points of a character by 100, or sells for 20,000 gold, which is pretty amazing. Or And silk webs, which you can throw for two layers of slow on any enemy in the game. Yeah, it'll be it's a favored use against Zeramus, but there are... For tough bosses in fast spots, that Silk Web could be a lifesaver. Yeah, it does not look like we're getting a tough boss here. Chokosura has a big bomb, caches it out against the uh, the, the uh, Kaipo Guardsman here at the, the Football Gauntlet slot, and is going to get a very quick kill here. So Chokosura team seems to be taking a marginal lead, but his shop sweep is very low compared to everybody else. We're going to expect to see him maybe give up a little bit to kind of get some items in his inventory soon. Yeah, and Pizza is, is right behind Choco, also used the big bomb on the fight, uh, but uh, has might have a little bit more gear than uh, Choco has as well, so we'll see. We find the, Although, the, the The yeah. fan favorite is here! Yeah, I, there's been a lot of seeds in this league where we've seen that hook early and then the magma come a little bit later. We're, I'm just hoping out uh, that we're going to get... Uh, the hook seed, finally. 
Yeah, there's been a bunch of teases this tournament where it's been hook and then tough to get, but extant magma key, and our runners are usually not shy about sweeping out literally everything until they have to take the hook route, so... You know, including one race where they found they found the magma key at a mist dragon in watery pass. So, you know, they're going to find they are going to try to find the magma key, and if they don't, that's when they're going to take the hook. The only situation where I think they might uh, do something different is if they needed a character check, uh, and so they went there and found a free boss at, at the hooks uh, boss location or the second the Rubicon spot. Um, but with this Porum start. Well, I guess pizza is heading into Eblin right away, so I might be eating my words. You might not need a character check here, but uh, looks like pizza is going to check anyways. Yeah, no hidden Mist Dragon either. Chokasur has checked both spots. One was Karate Man at Mist, and then we just saw Orbs at the Waterfall. So those two bosses are off the table. Two bosses that are usually fairly favorable for the runners to see. So we're starting to, uh, starting to see a lot of easy bosses fall off the table quickly here. <laughs> Uh, and to answer a question, Chef Code Tizer, how familiar do you need to be with FF4 in order to clear this? Uh, there is a lot of knowledge that you can get from the vanilla game to use this, but we do have lots of members of the community who've never played Final Fantasy IV, or maybe not this version of Final Fantasy IV, uh, who have had plenty of success and really enjoy this randomizer. So uh, if you like what you're seeing, definitely go ahead and check it out. All right, so we've got Pizza doing some shopping, found Cure Threes down below in the Eplin shop, and Dunk is going to give us our first look at, to give us a look at the Fabul shop, because I think I missed it last time, and there's our Life's Cure Twos, and Sirens. Sirens are important, but why? Uh, well, the, the Sirens are probably the most preferred way to grind in this randomizer, because this is still an RPG, and you do need to get to significant levels in order to beat tough bosses, and especially the final boss. Uh, and so the, what Sirens do is wherever you use them, it'll summon whatever the rarest encounter is at that location. And we found a, a couple places where that rare location is just a really good way to gain experience fast. Uh, one in the Underworld, there's a couple locations where you can summon an egg which contains a yellow dragon. Now that egg only has about 1800 HP, but it gives you 34,000 experience for it. So that's a really good way to do it. There's also a couple places on the moon where you can use it to summon uh, two gold dragons or King Ryu's, uh, and you could get just amazing amounts of experience out of that. That one's a little bit more dangerous. Um, you want to have hourglasses or weak spells in order to do it, but you can get a lot of experience in just one fight there. Looks like the chat's really excited that we see Fusoya here in the underground, but they are kind of avoiding the bad news behind it. There is a boss at the Rubicon spot that nobody wants to see. It is a evil wall special today. Yeah, the evil wall is a very scary... It's one of the scariest bosses of the Rubicon spot. So if we uh, don't find that magma key, this could be a very big challenge for our runners today. Yeah, I think uh, Pete's definitely going to probably bail out of here and take out as many overworld bosses as is possible to get that foo powered up because it takes... Uh, it takes bosses to get Fu his spells, and you're going to want as much of his arsenal online as you can get. Um, right now, we don't know what spells because there was no check, but again, with only a couple bosses down so far, I think two total, you know, uh, Fu's spell list is weighted that the good stuff comes later, so right now, it doesn't have much. Yeah, and seeing Fusia makes places like Mount Ordeals become a bit more uh, incentivized because if he gets three spells for every boss that you can beat and Mount Ordeals has three bosses in one, that's nine spells. It's also 300 HP. It's just a, a good deal. We might see people also defeating the bosses in the... Um, especially if we don't see the Magma Key, we might see uh, people clearing the bosses of the Mist Dragon in the Octomon spot just... Uh, to get that extra power on Fu for this uh, potential evil wall fight. Yeah, I think the tough thing, honestly, here is that the rest of the runners don't know that Fu is there yet, so they don't know to clear those bosses out for Fu power. Uh, right. But we'll see if they make that decision. And this is one of these things that could be uh, an advantage for Pizza, as even a slight advantage like those two extra spots, because if everybody else clears out all the overworld other than those spots, and then goes there, uh, they might not have as much incentive to back out and do everything else that Pizza did. So um, they might, Pizza might just have that more strong foo for a very difficult fight. And that could be the difference 
in a very difficult fight. I, I, I say the word difficult a lot because it is one of the more tough fights that you can get there. Like, you think of, like, Kainazo as, a, like, someone that you don't want to fight, but really that evil wall is extremely scary with how fast it is, getting to that crush phase, and a lot of HP that you've got to get through. Yeah, it'll be real interesting to see how that ends up playing out right now. So we've got Night Dew and Chokosura. They are high fiving right in the middle of Baron Inn, and they find that the second boss is Ball Fallus in the in the second slot. But you know, the good news is is that we are we are with Kane at this point, so should be all right. But probably a bit of a slog, and she is going to hit the hit the kids pretty hard here. He's, she's going to be able to probably one shot forums at this point. Yeah, I would definitely say being able to one-shot for him. This is a pretty strong physical spot uh, for this point in the game. Um, and so it, it's it's kind of tough because a lot of times uh, you uh, will want to try to avoid uh, getting her out of the tornado form uh, if you can, like if you have access to Berserking. Uh, but in this case, I don't think any of the forums are high enough level to know Berserk. So the only way to really ensure that you're going to do damage is to take her out of the spin with Kane's jump. Uh, but every time you do that, that triggers that physical counterattack. And so this is not a trivial fight here. Yeah, I mean, it looks like that uh, Chogosur does have at least a bow on the one forum and Kane jumping, so is getting through for some damage here. You've got Night Dew just jumping away with Kane at this point in time, just trying to, you know, deal as much damage as is possible. Um, and Invenerable notes that Invenerable notes that Porum has a, a heroin robe as well, but that doesn't really stop you from getting. Right, and the other advantage that's uh, to this spot is it's not a very fast spot, uh, so those physical attacks that come out from Val here aren't going super fast like you might see uh, in other locations. So that's kind of the advantage that we have here. Yeah, this is true, and so yeah, the low speed is certainly helping the cause and. Yeah, it'll Choco add on. Through. Yeah, Choco's through. Night Dew should be shortly behind. It'll add on a second cane for Choco, a second cane for Night Dew. Pizza's about to probably pick up a second cane as well, and they get the uh, the Holy Sword Excalibur, which Kane can definitely equip in the after years. Yeah, well, once we get the uh, Final Fantasy IV plus after years combo randomizer, it'll probably be a bit more uh, more relevant. <laughs> But not today. Cecil's Cecil's second best sword, it is still really solid, but oh, you need a Cecil to wield it. Yeah, it's a great weapon. Uh, it, it's also notable that it can be darted if we find an edge as well. I believe second only to the spoon in power of uh, dartable weapons. Indeed. And if worse comes to worse, you can also sell it for a lot of money. Yeah, do you need supplies? Well, you can trade in your holy sword for all the supplies that you can carry, more likely than not. Yeah, go into the Agar weapon shop, like, yeah, we'll give you a lot of money for that sword. <laughs> we can't find anybody who knows how to swing it. We'll probably hang it on the wall, but, but we want it. Uh, Big Dunka now making the play up Mount Ordeals finds a Sylph Summon on the way up. It will be nice if uh, if we get Iridia in the party early, uh, but he's just about to get to that first boss fight, and looks like we've got a blue hood. Is it going to be the Water Hag? Is it going to be the Gauntlet? It is the Water Hag. All right, well, we found one fish on the bridge. Three attacks will send the Water Hag back from whence it came, so this should take no time at but again, that's another free boss off the table. This is starting to get a little bit interesting. Yeah, as much as like you don't want to deal with the, the bull gauntlet, getting the water hag off the table in the early part of the game is not what our runners want to see. They want these free bosses to be in the really difficult spots. They want this water hag to be where that evil ball is. Yeah, or since King Queen Evelyn, we don't know what that boss is yet, potentially there as well. And you see Pizza already going into the Mist Dragon spot, but does not just elect to de defeat uh, Kabul, or uh, Kabul, uh, that's his hometown, Yang. Yeah, it's an interesting call, certainly, which means he is specifically Mist Dragon hunting and not trying to power up the Foo. 
um, which is a is a call that you can make. Certainly, it does take time to kill bosses, no matter where they are. So that's kind of the price that that's kind of the gamble. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's taking the speed rather than the power uh, sort of route. And since it's a race, I guess that makes sense. Uh, the question is, is that lack of power going to end up hurting him when dealing uh, with a fight as difficult as that? Uh, as potentially difficult as that uh, evil wall might be. If we find a magma key, then this could be de just be the right choice for Pizza End. That's the right... It, it could pay off for him, too. So. Yeah, so we've got back attack Leviathan here, who is actually doing decent damage with those Ice 2s at this point in time. Not like out-and-out -out killing characters or anything. Oh, wait, no, that poor just took twice her health and damage. Never mind. Thankfully, this spot is slow, and the thing with two white mages is that you have access to just just slamming slows onto a target right off the bat, so to make sure that you're getting just as many actions as they are. Yes, yeah, slow is a very useful spell throughout this uh, game, and the fact that the white mages get access to it right away uh, just makes it so even a back attack like this could be a, a bit less scary than it would uh, in other situations. Yeah, Dunka even breaking out with that flare for the mighty 153 damage. So we're we're seeing spells come out. We're seeing we're seeing all of our runners except for Pizza climbing the mountain, right? Yeah, Pizza finds the CPU at the uh, at the uh, uh, Optimum spot, and so uh, knows that the Mist Dragon isn't hiding in any of those locations. Uh, might be following suit, heading up to Ordeals next. Uh, might be doing some shopping first as well. So I believe this um, this ordeals is the last chance to uh, lead towards a magma. Yeah, it's if it were here, it's either here or a chain off of this location. Um, but this could be it. And Dunka has defeated the Leviathan, and now is going into going to see what this uh, item is. Ooh, oh, it is on. a magma key. <laughs> Once again, we were teased by the hook early. But this is a... Uh, this could be huge for Pizza, because this means less incentive to check that, and we know that Pizza has access to Fusia, and none of the other runners have that. Yeah, and we've seen Fu tilt a lot of races, um, because he just he just trivializes the mid-game a lot of the time. He'll you know, Pizza will be the only runner with a Black Mage, and as Fusoya learns those spells, you know, if he picks up Quake, he picks up a level 3 elemental spell, uh, he can go into Dwarf Castle and just trash Dwarf Castle. He can go into most of the Overworld locations if, like, the Baron Key pops up, or if the uh, Earth Crystal pops up and just trash those spots too, so options are real good. Yeah, it could also learn Berserk or Blink faster than Forum does. Um, could uh, make it so that places like the, if we've got the Baron Key, the Odin spot is a lot more checkable. The, bottom, the bosses at the bottom of Fey March are less scary when you've got a, a powerful Fusia. It just opens the door to a lot more than the uh, a lot more checks than the uh, other runners would have. Yeah, we're pretty deep in we're pretty deep in a Mage Meadow right now. I think a lot of our runners are really are really liking the caster play, and so. Having Fusoya versus not having Fusoya is a really big deal. Yeah, I mean, his only he only has a couple of disadvantages, and that 190 uh, MP base that doesn't increase with levels is one of them. Uh, and then his uh, agility of 20, which makes it awkward for anchoring in certain situations, is another. But really, the upsides are so much stronger than his weakness. There was a Soma drop floating around out there, though, so it is possible for him to push out to uh, to push out to 200 MP, which actually makes a big difference because it's four nukes instead of three in a single battle without doing. And we see the power of Fu there as a lit three hits Leviathan for quad nine damage on Mount Ordeals. Quad nines on Mount Ordeals. That's how powerful we are. Rip. <laughs> Goodbye, Leviathan. Long may you reign at the bottom of the ravine. <laughs> Looks like Dunka is going into Evelyn. Um, definitely going to find that nice shot there with the Cure 3s. Uh, we'll see if he goes and makes the character check or if he's just going for the shopping. 
It'll be interesting to find out because he does not know that there is uh, that there is money at the bottom of the at the money at the bottom of the mine here. Because if he can get if he goes and gets Fu, he'll be very happy. And I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, it looks like he is going to the character, so that's good for him. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if anyone goes in and just does the shop check because uh, the shops uh, in Eblin and the Underground and the Moon are a bit more stacked than the Overworld ones. Do you see those tier threes? You're not going to find those on the Overworld. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very useful. And with multiple canes, you might be looking for Bacchus wines, and you can only find those in a gated shop as well. Or if they haven't found sirens yet, you know, they might gamble that sirens were out of play and they might go find them. Uh, yeah. That evil wall's going away, and I'm so sad. Yeah, it's sad that we don't have to see our runners face this, but um, it is interesting. Now, there is still the possibility of d being at that king-queen spot, but we'll cross that bridge when, it, when we come to it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the dream, but the dream is far away at this point in time, as our runners are all going to start considering how they want to get to the underground. It looks like Chokasur is doing the shop check. We'll see if he goes for the character. Night Dew, it looks like, is going to be our first runner to dump, to dump the, the key in the well here, and he might decide to pass on the character in the hook spot, which, you know, again, we'll see how, how game-changing that is at the end of the day. Yeah, and Choco is going into the character check, so... Um... That advantage that Pizza might have had earlier is getting smaller and smaller as other runners are deciding to make this uh, this check as well. Yeah, we shall see then. Um, I guess, you know, I guess people aren't happy with double cane, double porum to start the seed off, I guess. Yeah, it might be that they are looking for a black mage of sorts too, so they're rewarded with that, sh uh, with that Fusia find without a doubt. Yeah, and before Dunka goes under, he is going to do Baron in here and pick up that second cane. So he is making that play. Choco Sir is going to be a third runner to add on add on the mop to the party, as he is going to grab Fu, be real happy, and probably hit the exit bell to bail out. Um, and Night Dew and Pizza are shaking the heavens here, as they're both going to head to underground now. Yeah, and it'll be fun to see what the routing is, because there's a bunch of places that you can go once you get underground. Um... With that pan, we'll see if they go straight to the self cave, and it looks like that is where Night Dew is going. Wants to get those checks out of the way right away. And I totally understand that play. Three free pan checks is real hard to pass up on. That is just, you know, that is just a huge percentage of the checks in the game, honestly. And it looks like Pizza is going to make a little small spit, uh, pit stop to do a little grinding here. Uh, we'll probably crack a siren or two for, for some eggs. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is one of the preferred uh, grinds in the game. Uh, and being able to uh, knock out an egg or two here is going to do wonders for his party's experience level at this part of the game. Yep. 34 large. Looks like we get the Baron key from the Sylphs. And uh, Night is going to probably be heading straight to Fabul to check out the item, other items. And then we'll see if Night decides to dive Baron right away while he's in the overworld. Yeah, I mean, with his lack of relative power not having gotten through Soya, that ends up being a really sharp play, I think, because it's a slightly easier dive for a character. So, might go and decide to do Baron to try and pick up a character at the end of the throne room and see what he gets there. It's a long cutscene, but, you know, in exchange, he'll be the first one doing it. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be kind of the advantage of that versus, like, Pizza seems to be gearing up. You're cracking some eggs, you're ready for underworld fights, basically. So, uh, there's going to be less incentive or to, de to deal with that cutscene when doing the Baron route. Yep, Sheila, terribly unexciting. First item is the Gungner Lance, which is the lance that Kane comes back into your party with after CPU in the vanilla game, and it adds some vitality, so physical defense. Um, but a package for the second item, I do adds on a key item, but he is unlikely to check the character there as well because of the long cutscene behind him. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's like uh, when you're in desperate demist hunting mode, you might turn in the package. You, we don't see it checked very often in this league, because of the long cutscene. Um, no surprise that Night 2 is not checking that. 
but it looks like he's not decided to go into Baron either. So, um... Yeah, he's doing... looking to... He's yeah. looking to do what everyone else has done at this point. So, Choco, one egg. It looks like Dunk is on egg number one. Pizza did one egg. Um, we're going to see a lot of our runners in this league have decided that the meta right now that the play to make is to do four to six eggs at this point. Just get a bunch of levels on your party. Just get get gassed up enough that you can maybe take a crack at a mid-range um, land a summon monsters boss and get away with something that way. Yeah, and I think the reasoning is, is also based on how fast you can be dispatched with those eggs as well. Uh, and with this party, with Pusia in it, if you've got uh, coffins, of course, you can one-shot the eggs no matter what. Uh, but I think like if you've got Virus or a level 3 spell or something like that, who's going to be able to one-shot those eggs too, and you can get that experience. If you do like the four eggs, as you mentioned, it's not going to take very long at all. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, unless you're really, like, and of course with Porum, you might be really pouring on the grind, because I think it's the mid-30s for Cure 3. She learns Cure 3 pretty slowly, so that's just going to be kind of tough. And then the vanilla rat tail chest yields the pass, which is our shortcut to Zeramus. Uh, if you have the Darkness Crystal, you could go into the Lunar Subterrain and walk all the way down, just like you would in the vanilla game. Uh, but in this randomizer, uh, we've repurposed the pass, which is an item that lets you into this uh, kind of a sleazy bar in Tor Tor Toria, uh, but instead will lead you directly to the bottom of the Lunar Subterrain and the Zero to Spike. Uh, so it's gonna, this is going to end up saving all of our runners' time because this is a free check. Everybody's going to uh, going to get this chest. Everyone's going to have access to the past. So we're just not going to see that long walk at the end to the Zero to Spike. Yeah, no walk of shame today. Knight Duke parking, though, over here at Dwarf Castle. It looks like Pizza is trying to set up maybe to see what the bosses are over here in the in the Land of Summon Monsters before making a decision. Same with Dunka, so we're going to check that out right now. Being able to see these bosses, of course, is a massive advantage because these bosses are nasty a lot of the time. Yeah, definitely some of the strongest in the game. And we know that that one on the right is going to be the, uh, the gauntlet, and the left is a moon boss. Get a very difficulty here. Oh, it's Wyvern. Uh, <laughs> we're not even going to get to see the fire in the sky here as Pizza and Dunka go for the reset button as fast as they can. But of course, Knight do finds the real prize here as he is looking for characters and he is looking for, for key items that he can get. And he has found the Dragon of Mist here in Dwarf Castle. So the hunt is off. Um, this is likely one everyone's going to find shortly. So we'll see what this comes out to be. <laughs> Yeah, this is good, and uh, this is one, I think, as the first fight in um, the Dwarf Castle, where you're going to get a key item after it, uh, or a potential key item, a character, and then there's so many things open in the underworld. We'll see. I think there's a potential for somebody to forget to go check uh, Mist Village. I, I, the only reason I say it is I probably would forget it. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I mean, especially because if you've already done the the triple pan check by going back up and talking to Sheila without having done Mist Dragon, then you have to kind of fit that into your route. Um, but if you haven't done Baron, you might do a Baron. You might end up doing Night Dew's possible option here with the Baron key in the back pocket is do a Mist Dragon Baron key double up that way instead. Especially if he goes down and sees uh, Wyvern and Gauntlet and decides that uh, Land of Summon Monsters is not to his liking like everybody else has so far. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, if you route the Mist Dragon check with the Baron Key, that makes a lot of sense and uh, could be a, a really good way of, of doubling up because that's sort of like the routing choices that you need to make in this game to get that whatever edge that you can in these uh, real high-level races that we've got in the league. Yeah, Wu Bear, one of our top 32 runners, noting the Gauntlet isn't necessarily too bad with Quake and the Cursed Ring, but of course on the flip side of the coin, A, Night Dew doesn't have Quake anyhow, so that's one person who really isn't going to be doing that. And two, and like you said, that takes a long time. And our runners, of course, they're trying to go fast. So sometimes you, in the mid, in the early and mid game, you gamble off a spot that's going to take a while, and you say, you know what? If it's there, good luck to my competitors. Congratulations to them. Let's take the rest of the day off. Yeah, exactly. That's the risk reward that you're all that almost all these uh, checks that you have are different. Like I can get through this one faster. Uh, but everybody else is going to check there too, so am I going to get any advantage out of it? Or do I take the gamble on something like a long gauntlet fight and hope that it pays off for me? 
Yep, second boss looks like it's one of the Myelin, one of the Myelin clones here, and we get a Tiny Summoner Child here, who's going to be very quickly not a Tiny Summoner Child. We have got, we've got uh, Teenager Rydia. Yeah, the instantaneous grow up there, uh, but still only 30 HP to start with. Yep, in her, I mean, in her arsenal, though, she will get her level 2 spells immediately, and she'll have one of the more important summons in the game, well, is Titan, interestingly enough, because it is the Quake analog. So it will allow her to cast Quake once she's got some MP and some levels, which if she survives the fight, she will have them. Yeah, th she's definitely going to have some use. Um, I think in general, Rydia is, uh, unless you've got one of the, re you found re one of the real top summons like a Leviathan or a, or a Bahamut, uh, is generally more useful in the overworld part. But the Titan really helps her uh, maintain usefulness throughout the underworld as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it gives you an option as well with the Crystal Ring and with Titan to possibly go do Gauntlet as well for Night Dew as well. So it ends up being a pretty good character pickup overall in the grand scheme of things. Uh, adds a little bit more balance to his party and does give him a Black Mage where nobody else has really been hurting for one with Fusoya online. Uh, Adult Rydia, also notable, can equip the Zeus Gauntlet. So Zeus Gauntlet, uh, Bandana, Heroin, and either a Dragon Whip or a Good Bow can be a good physical option as well. Uh, that particular setup with the Dragon Whip, if you find it. Um, speaking of which, I do have to interrupt myself, as Night Dew finds the Adamant Stone. We are halfway home at this point in terms of forging the crystal, as Dwarf Castle with the Mist Dragon will be required. Yeah, and as you noted, like, uh, not surprised, Chokos are already in uh, Dwarf Castle. People making this check early is not uncommon. It's probably the lowest level of all the, uh, the boss fights in the underworld so heading to that first makes a lot of sense especially if there's a, people still want characters at this point yeah absolutely and of course so uh big dunka is the only runner who has diverged at this point as he has gotten down into baron and is fighting dr the guy in the first boss spot um but of course jokasur and pizza are both about to add on gritty if they want her but they're more importantly going to add on the adamant to their inventory yeah, I think with the Pusia in the party, the, the prospect of Iridia isn't as um, strong. Uh, depending on whether or not you want the two quorums or you want the uh, Iridia, it looks like uh, Pizza decides to take the, the summoner. Uh, we'll see if Choco makes the same. Choco, Choco did the same. Choco also took the summoner. I am literally the only runner of this game who'd go two quorums. Maybe I could get a third. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think they're... I think either choice is fine. I don't think... I, I guess Rydia, if you've got the, the magic, can probably plow down enemies a little bit faster. But I also like having another person who can cast slow or berserk as well. So, yeah. Absolutely. And Pizza's decided to to, ta to just blast his Rydia into, into bits here so she doesn't get any experience from this. So setting up for a later slingshot more likely than not. So we're likely to see Rydia dead on his screen for a while. Yeah, if, you're, if your intention is to take Rydia all the way to Zeramis, then this makes perfect sense for pizza. Dwarf Castle Shop has a whole lot of nothing. There are unihorns, and that is it in the item shop, as Chokosura is here looting out Dwarf Castle. Yeah, we did see, especially if you watched the earlier race today, a couple of our runners actually buy the unihorns uh, for the final battle, but it's, it's kind of a niche strategy. We're not seeing it too often yet, but it is an option that uh, our runners will have. Dunka able to take out Ashura in the uh, second spot in the uh, Baron Castle. I'm going to get that character check and the, and the uh, key item check real soon here. Well, real soon in relative terms. It's 37.30 now, and we're about a minute out. Um, <laughs> so, alternate twin. We get we get the bad twin. That's right. We get Palum, who, of course, Dunka decides to ditch one of his forms to add on a Palum instead. So did not get Rydia because has not done Dwarf Castle yet, but instead gets Quake Kid. Yeah, uh, Palum's uh, earlier, much earlier learning of Quake uh, generally makes him the preferred Black Mage over Rydia, uh, unless you're able to find that early Leviathan or uh, Bahamut summon. Yeah, and of course, having two Black Mages out there is making the Foo play a little bit less perfect for everybody involved, because you have it's the mix of casters that you want. I mean, his tankiness is pretty spectacular, honestly, so 
you know, really can't go wrong with that. But here we go. It takes about a minute to get to this item from when you kill the boss. It actually really takes about uh, 55 seconds here. And it is! Oh my goodness, we are done, everybody. It's over. We're going home. We have no mode. We have a Legend Sword. The moon is completely unnecessary, and we might not even find the Darkness Crystal before we have every before runners get into go mode. This is about as jetty as we've seen a seed uh, with the potential. Like, these checks are not difficult that we've got here. Yeah, so if anybody was hoping for something super rude in on the moon, well, that would be a heck of a rabbit hole to fall into at that point. And it looks like uh, Pizza is going to be making the uh, Keyless Tower play here. Yeah, interesting. Nightdew looks over that gauntlet. I think, yeah, Nightdew's going to make the gauntlet play. He's he's doing it. Yeah, people are making gambles. Uh, they don't realize how easy it's going to be to find Go Mode once they do. Everyone yeah, doing I... something different. <laughs> Yeah, if you played it straight and you routed Baron after Mist Dragon check after killing Mist Dragon at Dwarf Castle, you have go mode. That routing ends up that routing ends up not only being correct from a sort of a mathematical standpoint, but ends up being optimal and ends up being the winning strategy. Yeah, now the question is how many rabbit holes do people fall down? Well, we'll see what's at the top of Keyless Tower. It looks like his Pete's is going to climb. Chokasur is up there already as well. So two of our runners are, are neck deep in the tower right now. Um, Dunk is taking on the Odin spot, finds Octomom, who, of course, immediately slugs Talon to death. Um, I'm going to try Berserking Kane here and Berserking Porum with the bow to try and push on through here. Nightdew is... Nightdew will be there a minute, so don't worry about him. He's going to be killing... He's going to be killing soldiers for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that fight takes a minute. Uh, but uh, Dunka, with the power of Fu and Nuke, is just making a uh, pretty good uh, time defeating this uh, this Octomon here. Octomon has the uh, special uh, quality that every time you hit it a couple of times, it loses a tentacle and then uh, gets slower and slower as the fight goes along. Indeed. So, of course, we do find at the top of the tower there are the Magus Trio, who are fairly susceptible to getting getting beamed with Quake and or Titan. So, we should see we should see some spell casts here, and should just see them get ripped through pretty. Dunka finds a lot of nothing, gets a ninja shirt. So, no ninja for the shirt, but that also sells for a lot of money, I guess. Yeah, it does sell for money. It is also one of the memeier things he can find. Yeah, in terms of the meme scale, it is number two in terms of the memeier pieces of equipment you can find. It is only trailing the Drain Spear at this time on the rank. Absolutely, yeah. We'll, we'll keep those power rankings updated for everybody, folks. <laughs> uh, Choco in very good position, having Mindy left of the Mega Sisters to defeat. Um, really, uh, really uh, just uh, a real clean fight here, all, all things considered. Alright, so Dunko, of course, is going to decide to tack on some levels here, it looks like. Um, gonna Probably it's time for some slingshotting here. Um, Chokasur is down to the front sister, Mindy, so he is about to get a kill on the Magus 3. The only big thing about the, this spot is it's a ton of health, but not much else. Nightdew is wrapping up here in the underground on that uh, on that gauntlet, so we'll have to keep an eye out for what items are about to fall for every. Luka Key at the top of the tower that both Pizza and Shoko just got. So uh, we'll see if uh, either of them fall victim uh, to that route, uh, or if anyone makes the if either of them make the play of going up to Baron. I mean, if you gambled Keyless Tower, you. I think runners who gamble Keyless Tower are generally going to commit to the bit at that point. So, they're both running out this Luka Key, and we're probably about to see the Sealed Cave on two screens. I tend to agree with you, uh, but, you know, people have surprised me in this race, in this league sometimes as well. Uh, but I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, it's, it's real hard to not, like, just say, look, this is my play, I'm going for it in a race situation. Yeah, um, it, some some people don't. It's real interesting. Some people will reconsider, but it's it's hard to. 
the uh, the difference would be if this wasn't a keyless tower, if the key was available earlier, and then it would be something that would be like widely accessible and uh, like incentivized for everybody. Then people would be more likely to not follow the something like the loopy key afterwards. But with the key, the fact that this keyless tower it makes perfect sense. And it looks heading. like it looks like Dunk is in the right spot right now. He is in the. He is in Dwarf Castle. He is not here to shop. He is here to kill a dragon and then kill another boss. And then he's going to get the goods if he can just take out these two fairly simple bosses. Uh, Choco made a save outside key, uh, the sealed cave, uh, but then went up to check the the demist spot. Um, finds the spoon. We'll see if, while he's in the overworld, if he either resets or if he decides to route Baron in. Or goes back to the sealed cave. He is keeping the spoon as a key item, though, so he is sitting on, it looks like, three, six, eight, so if he does go to Baron, he'll get he'll get his Legend Sword for nine and his Crystal for ten. Um, Big Dunka, if he finishes this out, he could go, he can go Adamant for seven, Spoon for eight, Crystal for nine, and ten is the key number. You need that for, uh, you need that to get yourself there, so... Yeah, that's just going to be a. Uh, that then Dunk is going to have that uh, that question: Should he hunt for more key items? Probably will check the D mist for a key item since he's one away, and we'll find that spoon for the tenth. Yeah, and it it ends up being an incredibly sensible play at that point, and it would be a very heads up play knowing how many key items you have if you're tracking correctly. Um, the difference between nine and ten is half the grind time. It's gigantic. Um, and especially if you get the spoon takes no time at all. And uh, I believe Night Dew was rewarded with the uh, glass helm for defeating the uh, um, the uh, gauntlet. And I, I think glass helm might be number three on the list. Yep. And Night Dew, of course, gets absolutely torched by the wyvern while Pizza has found the rat tail down here at the sealed cave. So the rabbit hole runs deep at this point. This could, this could be a Darkness Crystal rabbit hole right now that could consume one of our runners eternally. Yeah, if this, uh, if the, um, if the rat tail leads to Darkness Crystal, then that's going to be real rough for both Pizza and Chokosura. I mean, Big Dunk is in a great spot right now. Like, this is basically his race to lose at this point. Yeah, especially with Night Dew trying to grind himself along against this Wyvern here, is going in for a second, going in for a second helping of Dragon Breath here, it looks um, and it looks like Chokasura and Pizza are not likely to pass up the rat tail here, knowing that half of Go Mode's still out there. Right. Flywind consume, consume them eternally. I mean, this is free enterprise. Free enterprise is serious business. <laughs> yeah, of course. might be able to get one wall off, but this is going to be a tough one to... Yeah, there's the reset. I, I think, I think it's, it's, Yeah, it's probably a good call. <laughs> But during all this talk of rabbit holes and chasing dreams, uh, Dunka has the dream attained. He is about to go and forge his crystal like a good player. He's not going to forget, which is awesome. Um, so he is going to uh, be our first runner in go mode pass and crystal in hand in just a moment. My goodness, 48 minutes. I think he just goes and picks up a bunch of sirens and he's going to go to work. Also, there are tiaras down here for tiaras for our casters. That is some great magic defense. So that'll be excellent for the uh, that'll be excellent for the final. Yeah, lacking something like a Gaia or a wizard helmet that actually boosts the uh, the white magic stat for Porum, um, the uh, tiaras just so good in magic defense it'll make it so that she can uh, survive big bangs that maybe she wouldn't have any business surviving normally all right night dew is in the right place as well as night dew is now dipping down to the barren trash bin it looks like so it looks like night dew is going to be our second runner into go mode if uh, if this plays out the way that it probably will and he decides to give up on the odin spot and just go straight to the trash can um, Pete's is on his way out with the tail, so we're going to see what the play is with that right now. And Chokosura cleans up Tail Dim, and his tail is his tail is secure as well, so he'll be leaving the uh, sealed cave as well in just a moment. 
Looks like D Dunk are going right back to the shopping instead of um, instead of checking out Miss Village. If he goes to Miss Village, he'll be able to get that spoon for the tenth key item and make this grind go twice as fast. Uh, two, three, five, eight. No, he's only on eight. The pass does not count anymore as a key item because of changes in some of the more recent patches. Um, he is on oh, eight. I'm... He is on eight right I'm... now. He will only get to nine. I'm sorry. I thought you had said that he would be at nine now, so I was just going on yours. I didn't count. Uh, my bad. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. No, Night Dew, however, will Night Dew, however, does have the spoon already. He's on two, four. He's on two, four, six, seven. He's on the same nine items if he gets his Legend Sword as well. Okay, so then the question becomes: Do you hunt for a key item? Like, do you have a couple spots that you could check real fast uh, that might yield a? Uh, that tenth key item that you need for the fast grind, or do you just go and fight eggs for uh, the 30, uh, 32,000 instead of the 64,000? I, I 34, 68. I mean, there's no quick spots left. They saw those two bosses down below, and you know, I don't think you want to fight Wyvern. I, the only thing quick about Wyvern is how fast you get microwaved, and I don't think they want to do Football Gauntlet, because the only thing fast about Football Gauntlet is um, how quick can you tape down your A button and go grab a drink, so... Um, yeah, those options are really bad. <laughs> but it was just, the Rat Tail was just the Holy Avenger, which means it is very likely that, uh, that our friend Wyvern has the Darkness Crystal in her clutches and has decided to let none of our runners get rabbit holed out of this raid. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be good. I mean, they'll probably, like, when... If they're watching the uh, IRC and they see when Tunka finishes, uh, then that might be like knowing that somebody else didn't fall down this whole Luca Key sort of train that everybody else did. Um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out though. Pizza's in the right place. Chokasur is doing a little bit of shopping in Baron at the uh, the restricted shop here, but buying the keys, trying to look for probably some gear for his team. Um, finds mute arrows and a, and a bow, which I think that's a little late for that, but he's going to go with it anyway, because I think he's using archer form here. Um, but yeah, mm. Night, Dew, Night Dew is about to get his go mode and be our second runner into go mode. Dunk is going to get his ninth key item here off of the spoon. Really interesting. Dunka also went into the missed uh, boss location because he's in go mode and his Fusia is not at full power yet. Or was well, not was not changed very quickly there just adding on the extra 100 hit points for safety's sake honestly is always a good idea so so i think if he does go he could go to keyless tower and get that 10th key item we know that it's a key item but the I, risk of it not being one i, I the dunk is going right to grinding yeah yeah, Dunk is going to decide to grind. We've got Pizza. Yeah, he's got Avenger Kane at this point. Avenger was the Rat Tail prize, so um, he and Choco Sura will have ten key items and an Avenger Kane to grind with. Um, that's that's real good. That's real fast. <laughs> so this is going to be this is going to be real close, everybody, because all of our runners are going to converge on that grind spot at the same time. Dunka and Night Dew are going to have a little bit of edge on their grind time. But Choco Sir and Pizza with their 10th key item with the Luka Key and the Rat Tail for 11, of course, are going to catch that up. And we're going to see how that plays out. Yeah, this is going to be end up being a real, real close fight here. Yeah, this is this is definitely going to be one of those ones where something that somebody did early in the run um, is what's going to is what's going to cost them enough time to have lost this race. And it's it's going to be the thing that you're not going to see it until you watch it back, so I highly recommend that if you want to know how to play a Jet Seed, this might be a real good one for later, too. Also remember, in, in all of this, Night Dew did not pick up Fusia, and so that's going to be another factor in, yep. this, in this race here. He didn't pick up the Fu, and he's not even the first in Go mode. He's the second person to have both halves. He's going to be the second runner to forge the crystal. Pizza 55 seconds away at this point in time. Just needs to get through this cutscene. Decide if he wants to add on another Black Mage or not. I, I'm a fan of adding on another Black Mage here, by the way, and going full Reflect Strats, but he is does not seem to be. Well, he's got an Avenger uh, for Kane, so I think he's probably going to do something hybrid here. Um, but uh, doesn't want to... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Rydia or Palom, which one would I rather take? 
No, I, I agree. I think Palum, Palum gets Palum will probably level up a little bit faster, but yeah. uh, the big thing is he actually is going to get rewarded when he sees that he can buy tiaras for his casters because Rydia can't equip a tiara for that extra, that extra 15 in the Black Magic casting. Yeah, I mean, if, if you know that beforehand, then, that you're going to be able to buy a tiara right there in Coco's shop, then yeah, then slam dunk keep Rydia. Of course, but of course, Knight Dew, Crystal Online, second runner with the Crystal in hand. He is about to go over to the Egg Peninsula, and he is going to go ahead and get some grind work in it. Pizza is hiking down to the trash bin right now. It's just going to be a moment. Joker Sir is killing Osura right now. Um, so Pizza, 11 key items. There it is. Legend Sword. He's in go. He's got to go forge, and he's got to grind. And so let's just keep an eye on Joker Sir as he is going to get one more shot off for 2700. Those mute arrows paying off in spades here as Porum is just doing the work. Yeah, mute arrows, of course, dealing four times damage to Asura uh, by being a uh, mage type enemy. Um, mute arrows doing, getting that racial bonus there. So are you, are you ready? Are you ready for the most exciting part of Free Enterprise? That's right. Four-way grinding, everybody. Lots and lots of eggs. I hope you like omelets and are not vegan, everybody, because we are about to kill some eggs. Yeah, eggs benedict is my preferred way, but scrambled are fine, too. Yeah, no, I mean, I made I made pancakes today, so I guess that counts as eggs of a sort, because you need eggs to make pancakes, but... Alright, Pizza looks like he needs to go get Sirens. I don't think he's got a stash on hand. He's gonna go buy out, uh, he's gonna go buy out the, uh, the Football Castle stock of Sirens right now. Much like all of our other runners have at this point, Chokosur is like to do the same here, as he is our last runner to grab the Legend Sword at 55-24. And we are on our way, everybody. This is going to be a nail bite. Pizza stating he only needs 10 sirens. He grabs 10 more to go. And he is getting ready to rock and ride here. Chokasur is going to forge in just a sec. So all of our crystals forged before 57 minutes today. Yeah, when you're looking at uh, 10 sirens when you're dealing with eggs, that's going to be that's going to represent over 600,000 experience. So that's a lot. Uh, for 10 sirens there. At 10 key items, that is. Yeah, of Which course. I'm always, a, I'm always of the mind to grab a few extra, just to be sure, but um, it looks like Night Dew is going to be using Rydia as an agility anchor, because she is very dead at them. Um, well, it looks like Dunka is going to go with probably some hybrid strats, going to take the full five, wants to get some hit points on those pallets. Yeah, my, Night Dew might have had... I mean, all of our runners, I believe, found that a curse ring pretty early, and so might be having Rydia at a very perfect level to have a curse spring on our tabo. Extremely low agility for the anchor, uh, which makes, which not only puts Zeromus at a slower speed, but puts the rest of your runners at a higher speed too. So uh, it's a win-win overall. Yeah, we shall see. Certainly Knight Dew, of course, is looking at the double cane comp right now. It looks like all of our runners have two canes in their composition. Um, so it doesn't look like anybody decided to sacrifice for the fourth mage for full hard reflect, full on hard reflect strats. And it looks like we're going to see a lot of hybridization here. So we shall see at this point what the position plan is for the Zeromus fight. Um, reflected, reflected whites are a little bit slow. Reflected nukes are a little bit faster. Um, berserking is you know, berserking. Like you know, you just turn them on and just uh, go AFK. But yeah, we'll, we'll, like to <laughs> we'll also see if anybody who didn't pick up that Avenger sword. Uh, decides to go with the Unihorn strategy as well, using the uh, Berserk until uh, up to a certain point, and then using the Unihorn to stop the uh, attacks and finish off with the uh, with the Reflect as well. Um, so we'll see if that comes into play today. Yeah, it's an easier it's an easier strategy to execute if you have an edge in your party with darts because you don't have the Berserk edge to dart. But uh, that's more of a vanilla stratagem here. We don't really have that option on hand because our runners are. Uh, our runners are not playing the vanilla game right now. Absolutely. Yeah, um, Dunka was the first to get into um, into go mode and start the grind. Uh, the, the disadvantage that Dunka has is the nine key items is these uh, eggs are only going for 34,000 experience, 
which is versus the 68,000 that the 10 key items give. Yep, and it looks like I am getting corrected by chat. It looks like Jokosur has decided to take the, four, the quad mage lineup, has a Porum, has a Palum, has a Rydia, and has a Fusoya. So it has decided that it looks like Chokosur will be our one runner going full reflect strats for sure. Maybe sneaking in a couple of swings with Kane to do a little bit of damage, but we'll see what's about to happen. That does mean that he is very committed to grinding his party out to level level 52 plus at this point, though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll... So we're going to see a little bit of a different strategy from Chokosur, but yeah, it needs to make sure that he gets those levels up so that his forums learn white, his... Uh... And his uh, Palum learns new, his Rydia learns new. I mean, you can go with level three magic, but the charge time on Nuke is so much faster. It's so much better to have the Nuke available. Yeah, Pizza's definitely catching up to Night Dew at least, and so it's going to be real close between Dunk and Pizza to who figure, finishes out their grind first. Um, I think Dunk is done though. I think he's decided that he's ready. He knows he's in a jet seat at this point. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, really, all of our runners know that they're in go mode in less than an hour. That's pretty. No moon required at all on this seed. That's uh, that's going to be a fast seed. Another thing with the grinding is how much do you want to risk? Like, how high level do you want to go? If you go in earlier, you can get there fast, but that makes zero miss a lot more dangerous if you go into a lower level. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like Dunka is on the strategy of got Porum some got Porum some good healing spells here, and is on what looks like the strategy of I'm going to use the two canes to do my damage. Um, dump dump Por dump Palum as an agility anchor, slap the cursed ring on him, so he is super slow, um, and is going to use uh, Fu as a white mage and Porum as a utility caster to kind of shore up the shore up the fight. And we're about to see the most important part of this game, aren't we? Yeah. So Demarin. Uh Whose butt are we going to kick today? I wish I knew. Um, I can't see the future, but there's 400 butts out there that need kicking, so we'll see what we've got tonight. That's a lot of butts. Another three runners. We're going to see who's going to break for the break for the, uh, break for the pass soon. I'm pretty sure Pete's is about to wrap it up, though. I'm pretty sure he's closing in on getting white on his uh, nukers here. Like I said, three runners really committed to the grind bit here for uh, for hybrid strats. Yeah, I think Pizza's Porum is still a little low on the levels that he wants. So that's yeah. probably going to be where we need to go. Yeah, maybe one or two more at this point for, for him. But Night Dew's got a little little ways to go. Palum just learned Meteo, so he's close. He's two eggs away, it looks like, for Pizza from full Reflex Strat. Chokosura using the assassin dagger to swoon the eggs. We'll instantly kill anything, you know, on at some percentage of chance the assassin dagger is patched out of the original game. Grr -grr. And here we go. It is. It is. Looks like what is this? Ooh, uh, Safer Sephiroth. Sephiroth. My brain first went to Ultima from Final Fantasy XII because it's a very similar sprite with the wings. But I think there's also a, a little bit of uh, well, like the final form of Orphan, I think, in Final Fantasy XIII in that. But definitely Safer Sephiroth here. Yeah, and it looks like this is a this is a double zerker strategy for Dunka here, or at least one zerker, one jumper, as Kane is going to hop out of the way of the Big Bang. It looks like uh, Pizza is done. He has decided he is ready to do this, so he is taking off and flying down to Toraya, and he is going to be our second runner into this Aromas fight at the... Night Dew still committing. Chokosura definitely needing to commit here, because he definitely needs to get uh, Nuke on at least... He needs to get the top end nuke on at least two more characters at the. Yeah, but that ref the pure reflex track could be a very fast one when uh, when applied properly in the fight. So Choco might be able to make up a little time there versus these uh, hybrid and Zerker strats, but uh, the extra time is gonna take is gonna be felt in this grind. 
Yeah, it's real tough because Choco's got to go. Choco's going way deep on this grind right now. Uh, does get nuke on Rydia right now. He might, I think, is that enough? Is he done? He is wrapping it up as well, so we're going to see him take off. We've got Pizza doing some re-equipping here. Chokosura taking one last look, and he decides he's ready to go, so he's out of there. That's three runners who have decided to break from the grind. Dunka is getting set up with those Berserkers at this point, and he's got Fusoya on healing duty right now. So it's going to be a double cane zerking stratagem here, and that's going to be the bulk of his damage. And I believe Night is pretty close to it. Yeah, it's just taking a while. That nine, nine key items versus ten is just a massive, massive difference here. But it's going to put the Cursed Ring on Rydia. He's done with Rydia at this point. He's got he's got the spells on the two Porums at this point, level 52, so they are White Casters now. So I think he's he's good to go, and he's ready, and he's done. And we're going to see all of our runners here probably on this Aromas fight at about the same time. Dunka's probably about halfway through the fight at this point, though, and has a nice advantage and is likely to pick up this win here, even with only nine key items. Absolutely. This is a real nail-biter of a, of a race here. He Close finish, photo finish. Someone's gonna win by a nose. How many more uh, cliches can I throw out right now? We got them all. We've, if you want a cliche, we, we've got cliches, everybody. But yeah, three nuke casters for Chokosura. He's in reflect mode here. One last save. He's going in. We've got Night Dew making the hike right now. Pizza's in the cutscene. Big Dunka is hacking away slow and steady. Waiting for waiting for Fusoya to cast a heal spell here as necessary. There's a shake from there's a shake from Zeromus. We'll see. There is a chance that Zeromus could do enough damage to take out both mages at the same time. They have plenty of armor, admittedly, and they've got plenty of levels. But you know, one bad break could be decisive here. It might be the tiara that saves Porum too. So we'll see. Oh yeah, yeah that one's easy. that was free. Thirteen hundred damage, no problem. Might not even need to back it up with a Cure 3 here for safety purposes. But Night Dew does edge Chokosura to the line. Peeps is in, in the fight start now. Night Dew is hiked up. Chokosura is walked up. We've got we've got Untransformed Zeromus on two screen. We've got this... Chokosura talking to Zeromus. This is it. Yeah, if you want a close race, you found it. Yeah, we are right. We are right to the wire right now. Chokosura stepping into the fight. We've got Chokosura with Untransformed Zeromus on the table right now. Pizza second to pop the crystal. Night Dew just moments behind. They are going to see safer Sephiroth. They are going to want to kill this guy before he uses Supernova 18 times and ruin Ch And Chokosura is about to pop the crystal as well. Just moments behind here. Chokosura going to get set up for some reflect strats here. Pizza Berserk goes out along with the along with the Avenger Sword. Night Dew starts zerking up his team as well. Big Dunk has been going at it for a while now. He does have the advantage at the moment, assuming one rogue Big Bang doesn't take his party. He is in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, but I think everything is in good shape right now. <laughs> I think the the thing that Dunka has to worry about is a Big Bang like right into media following it. I think other than that, the time that he's uh, put in with these uh, Zerking uh, is giving him a, a, uh, a bit of a healthy lead. And here the rocks are falling. Danka is in the final phase of Zeromus. Uh, just needs to smack him a few more times and should be uh, winning this race. Yeah, that's that's looking good right now. Didn't get the didn't get the big bang into the into the rocks, so no cane is going to fall here. So the two canes are just going to keep on swinging, and there we are. That is it. Big Dunka takes it home. An hour, six minutes, and 36 seconds. Oh, the closest race of the league by by far, for sure. And he's going to be real happy with this win, but he's going to flip on the stream and go, Oh my god, I had a feeling. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, a couple things. Um, getting the Fusia helped. Uh, avoiding the Keyless Tower trap that uh, led Choco and Pizza into a bit longer of a run. But the downside was the nine key items, and that just kept it close for everybody. This was this was really well played for Big Dunker. Yeah, the big thing is so right now it looks like it looks like Night Dew is trying to add on some hybrid damage, as is Pizza. They are going for some hybridized strats here. We've got Whites and Nukes going out as well as their center character being dead, so they are in probably close to a dead heat at this point. Chokosura, since he's not doing any physical damage, he might nick this one. 
with a couple of spells. I, we have we have Dunka here, but we're going to ask you to hold for a moment. As if you pulled up the stream, you can see everybody's on Zeromus right now, so there's no time for talking to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is going to be a close one. If Choco's full reflect uh, can pull off, he might be, even though he was the last to actually get in the fight, the faster strategy might make him pull ahead of Knight doing pizza here. Um, I love me a hybrid strat, but that full reflect is so good. Knight do down a white mage, though. One Porum gets blown apart here, is down. So now things get real dicey with the two canes here. He might get the, he might get the transition and get a little bit of time to get his party back on their feet, but Porum absolutely does not know life two here. So we're going to see how he recovers this right now while Pizza's nuking away, Choco Sur is nuking away. Um, the nukes are flying fast and furious, but again, Pizza might have to deal with the uh, might have to deal with the phase transition here, putting out great damage. But Choco Sura only has to do half as much. Yeah, we see a shake on Night Dew's screen. Can the the other Porum be healed before the uh, before the Big Bay comes in? And it looks like it is. So the revived Porum is now healthy before the Big Bang comes out. So that's good. So in fantastic shape there, Choco Sura nuke goes out. It that lands. That's it. Unbelievable. Choco Sura coming back and nabbing this one with the with the full reflex strat to just sneak it out at 10857. Pizza's hybrid strats are also wrapping it up right now. We've got a shake, a flash, and a bang. He's out at 10909, but that is a difference of a mighty 12 seconds as Choco Sura hard charging down the line. Fourth in the fight, second to finish. Pizza's second in the fight, but third to finish. Night do. Night Dew got caught. Night Dew was the runner who got clipped by the rogue, by the rogue Big Bang here. This party lineup, no foo, not quite gonna bring it home today. All right, so Dunka, GG's on this run and getting that first place in this what turned out to be a real jet seat in this league. Yeah, I uh, I knew it was gonna be close. I didn't realize it was gonna be that close. Wow. Yeah, uh, the the main difference between the, the couple of runners that were just behind you and you uh, is they did Keyless Tower, uh, which ended up uh, getting him to the Luka Key, which ended up getting him to the Rat Tail, which gave him an Avenger. Um, and then they followed where you were. But they also, because of that, they had 10 key items as their grind went faster than yours. Uh, I, so I made up some time there. I almost did it. When I was, yeah. at, I went and checked to, to see what was, you know, that got the spoon. And I saw I was at nine, and I looked at my inventory, and I thought I had just enough to get uh, Palum up to nuke. And then about three quarter of the way through the grind, I knew I was going to end up being short. Um, but by then, it was too late. Yeah, but and, and then you you did you ended up using Palum as, right? Yeah, and I did, I, that that way, there's no point in keeping him. Yeah. Or anything else, so I anchored him, and then just went. Just went full out with the canes. That was the only chance I had at that point. Cause I was broke too. I couldn't buy any. Yeah, and it, it you know making do with what you got uh, as fast as possible uh, worked out really well. You got that that berserk going, and so you were in the fight quite a bit before anybody else. They were doing more reflecting things. They were getting through the Zerubus fight faster. But the fact that you were in there first uh, and were doing the that Zerka strat, it might have taken a bit longer. But overall, very well done. Very good job getting first place in this race. Yeah, I was gonna do hybrid reflex strats as well and mix and match, mm -hmm. but I was concerned my quorum was at 1700 health with very bad armor, and I was concerned that I needed to keep my magic around just in case of a death. And luck, well, I got super lucky that the two big bangs that I ate were both low rolls and nobody died. Yeah, that second one, of course, that's the one that we were really concerned with, and yep. that was really, really nice there. And of course, just to give everybody a brief update on the run, Night Dew has completed the run. Night Dew is in at uh, Night Dew is in at one hour, eleven minutes, and thirty-two seconds, and has completed this run at this time. Just so you're aware of how that updates the standing, of course, Big Dunka, you get to add on four points to your four, which you desperately needed after being kind of getting off to a slow start. So you're at eight. Pizza, two matches belted, has four points, a pair of third place finishes for his troubles. Knight Dew has a third and a fourth now. He is in deep at three points after two races. He's got work to do. Chokosura starts out his campaign in a nice way. Second place, three points. So he's probably feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, and I, I believe 
Uh, we've got uh, Night Dew and Big Dunka in here. Or, or we already had Dunka, but Tokusura also here. Uh, not a surprise, everybody finishing so close to each other. We got a lot of people in here. Uh, GG to everybody on this jet scene today. GG, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, GG, guys. Uh, so, um, uh, Choco, you decided to go with the uh, full reflex strats, picking up that fourth mage. Um, is that uh, what you wanted to do at the beginning, or is like if you had the choice between like the Avenger Kane strategy, which you did, you decided to go with the reflect instead? Uh, yeah. By that point, I've. I was, you know, I figured I wasn't going to find any anybody else, so I figured I might as well take the Palom and go for the Reflex Dress. Yeah. I did I did have that Avenger, but I didn't think I was going to make too much use of it at that point, so I just decided not to bother. All right, and uh, Night Dew, uh, the one thing that was uh, different about your uh, race than everybody else's uh, that I should bring up is... You were the only one that didn't do the character check in Eblin, and so you missed out on a Fusia on your run, but uh, that was really the only difference I saw between yours and everybody else out there. I had definitely thought about it, but I'm like, two forearms, two canes, I'm gonna head to Dwarf anyway. Um, it it kind of, you know, I was I was feeling pretty good about it, honestly. I mean, if you told me I was gonna post a 111-something uh, and uh, come in dead last, I might have laughed in your face. Yeah, this 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 was a, a weird scene without a doubt. So, um, how are y'all feeling about this run? Then, the, like, we're like, uh, have you seen any like real jet seeds like this in your practices? Me personally, no, I have not. I have seen close to two hour seeds oh. on all my practice races. So, I'm actually glad for this jet seed for once. Yeah, that was one of the quicker ones that I've seen. Um, I mean, I, where was Dark? Did anybody find Darkness? Uh, I did not. Uh, I think Darkness it. was at Leviathan, or Leviathan spot. Oh, okay. I just checked on the credits. I almost went white, for that, yeah. obviously. With the, it was behind the Wyvern boss, there. I think. It was behind it was Wyvern. Was behind, it was behind Wyvern at it was oh, behind that was Wyvern, 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 Wyvern spot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Night Dew Night Dew Night Dew took two cracks at it. After the second one went, yeah, I'm good, and everybody else looked at it and went. Uh, I'm not sure who reset faster because Pizza and Big Dunk, the two of the two of you hit it at the same time, and both <laughs> of you were mashing the reset button just to get out of it as fast as you could because it made no sense. That's awesome. As for me, I I thought about it, but I realized I already killed Water Hag, so I wasn't about to go mess with that for Bull Gauntlet there. So I yeah. just reset out of that. No chance. I was about to ask if anybody else took that Gauntlet fight. No, not me. <laughs> no, 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 no. After uh, I marked on my tracker, already killed uh, Pale Dim and the D Lunas, I, I wasn't about to bother with it. Because I knew that spot was either going to be Ogre Pogo or Wyvern, or Plague perhaps, but yeah, it just wasn't worth it to me. All right, so once again, I just uh, got to say congratulations uh, on this race. Um, with a, a difference of less than five minutes uh, between everybody who finished this race, this was just one of the most exciting ones that we can watch, and we couldn't have done it without uh, the you wonderful runners. So thank you uh, for putting on such a great show for us today. No yeah, problem. thanks for everybody that put this on for us. Much appreciated. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, and don't forget to give all of these runners night to a pizza 34 on big dunk i'll follow uh, for doing it uh also want to give shout outs uh to the team behind the scenes uh we have natara on the restream today doing a great job paranoia was uh very helpful on the tracking much appreciated there and of course uh my co-commentator demarin too demarin thank you uh for uh, being here with me today no, no, thank you for having me as always. It's always good to kind of get out. And this one was just a this one was just a short, sweet, wild ride through uh, through Jet Seed Heaven here for our four runners. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And uh, thank you out there, everybody, for joining us today. Um, 
Are, are we going anywhere? Oh, are um. we? We definitely are. <laughs> but before we go, I just want to talk about some of the upcoming races which are coming up for those who are asking. So we are in the midst of a league. So every evening this week, at least weekday, we will be having another race, either at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. it looks like. And while most of these races are on RPG Limit Break, check between RPG Limit Break and the Free Enterprise channel on Twitch for those races. Uh, like I say, every evening between 8 and 9 p.m. Eastern, there is a race this week. So you definitely want to check those out. We have so many excellent runners, and they're all put together in different circumstances in the race for their lives. But with that, we are going to send everyone over to uh, RPG Limit Break. It's interesting that I'm quiet, but what can you do? Uh, we're going to send everyone over, sorry, to Invenerable. And uh, hopefully everyone has a lovely time. And again, make sure to follow our runners and our commentary team who uh, do all the work to keep this going. So have fun, uh, play more for Enterprise, and we will see you all hopefully later this week. Bye, everyone.